Welcome to another episode of the Tobago House of Assembly's Post-Executive Council Media Briefing. This week, the Secretary for Finance and the Economy, Joel Jack, and the Secretary of Infrastructure, Quarries and the Environment, Kwesi Devines, address the media. Of course, this is my first time in this capacity addressing the media. So let me um, set the record straight immediately by saying that um, the responsibilities that fall under my, my portfolio include infrastructure quarries and the environment. Um, of course, it shows definitely the emphasis um, that the division will be looking towards. Um, one thing that um, we definitely can say, I'm, I'm happy to be here to work with you, and the relationship with the media definitely has to be one that is, is open both ways, and I assure you that we will maintain that relationship that we had previously, um, and we'll take it beyond um, into the foreseeable future. Um, that being said, I'm pleased to report at this time that the Trinidad contractors has already taken up um, position on site at the Lambo River, and that, of course, we're going to be commissioning a bridge in that area. The project is, is um, estimated to last 12 months. And of course, this bridge, just a background, um, with the assessment of the increase in traffic on the Claude Noel Highway, the division would have begun looking at alternatives to traffic management. Of course, traffic management is very important to us. And we would have um, observed or the studies would have been done and the Milford Road would, would have been identified as a possible conduit to release some of the congestion on the Claude Noel Highway. That being said, we know that there are three choke points, um, the Lambeau River, the Signal Hill River, and the Thompson River area. And of course, so then we are going to engage in a project of getting bridges, two lane bridges in each of on each of these um, locations. Um, as a pilot, the first bridge is going to be built on the Lambo River. It's going to be a two-lane bridge with sidewalks on both sides. Um, and that is, that is critical as we ensure that the steady flow of traffic is maintained. And we no longer will have the, the issue of the Bailey Bridge where we have to wait on one side of traffic has to wait on the other. Um, I'm, I have been assured that all testing has been done in terms of wave testing um, and to ensure that the bridge that is um, built and designed and was de designed is one that will meet the needs of Tobago um, for at least um, future generations to come. So I'm, I'm really happy that this has started and we are holding the contractors to task on, on a 12-month project. The project itself is at a cost of 18 million dollars. So we look forward to the delivery of that bridge. Um, as it regards noise pollution on the island, it's new that environment is paired with infrastructure and many eyebrows of course were raised initially but I would assure you that the technical people in the division actually are quite relieved that there's that marriage of infrastructure and the environment and I would really like to commend the Chief Secretary on this move. I think it's actually a great move on the environment, especially near and dear to me. And from the time it was announced that the environment portfolio will be under, under my purview, I would have gotten calls and emails almost immediately from stakeholders in the industry. And one of the key complaints came about noise pollution on the, on the island. Um, I thought it was limited to the southwest, but of course the other parts of the island are, are so affected. Um, that being said, I'm pleased to announce that the police, Trinidad Police Service, has been very proactive um, in terms of dealing with the issue. Um, they, in, through their series of meetings, of course, this would have been an issue that was raised, and in partnership with the environment um, unit. We're now going to see from Thursday, 9 p.m., joint patrols, a task force has been set up, and they're going to be patrols from 9 p.m. on Thursday, 
And that patrol will be made up of persons from the Crown Point Police Station, of course, the environment officers um, are going to lend support. But we're going to start monitoring noise levels in the area. Um, of course, you know that we call it popularity strip in particular. Um, we are a tourism focused island. So in as much as we like to have a good time and entertainment is part of it, we must realize that we have to share the space that we live in. 116 square miles is not quite enough for everybody to do as they want. So we have to share the space. And we're now going to have this task force set up and they will be starting to monitor from Thursday, 9 p.m., tomorrow at 9 p.m. And this was, of course, after consultations with um, the bar owners. So um, I would like to commend Senior Superintendent Archie for the work that she has, has done to spearhead this effort or to drive this effort. Um, we actually have a meeting this afternoon to firm up the arrangements, but it rest assured that there will be some relief to the tourism operators, at least the accommodation owners in the area as it regards noise. And I'm, I'm now asking and I'm imploring owners of the bars, restaurants, and even the common Tobagonian um, to really ensure that we are mindful that it's not just about us having a good time and not thinking about anyone else, but we have to share this space. Um, we earn our bread and butter arguably through tourism, and we have to ensure that this space is one that people want to, to be in, to visit, and to continue visiting. And we don't want to go on to TripAdvisor and see the negative comments about noise in the, in the area. So I'm really happy that we could come to this, this sort of place where we look at um, the police getting involved. Of course, community policing is important. And it cannot be emphasized enough that community policing is the approach and that it's a softer approach. So it's not necessarily an enforcement do as I say approach, but it's working together, collaborating to ensure that everyone is comfortable within the Tobago mm. space. This afternoon, I'm pleased to announce that a delegation um, from the European Union to Trinidad and Tobago comprising all six European Union ambassadors will be placing We'll be visiting Tobago, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be hosting them on Monday, 13 February. And we will see coming to Tobago, um, following the initial courtesy call to the Chief Secretary and myself, a delegation that will include the ambassador of the European Union, as well as ambassadors um, from, of the Kingdom of Spain, of the Federal Republic of Germany, of the Kingdom of Netherlands, um, His Excellency, Mr. Tim Stew, um, High Commissioner um, for the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, as well as the Ambassador of the Republic, of the French Republic. And they will be convening um, meetings after the formal introduction to the Chief Secretary. They'll be convening meetings with all secretaries of the assembly through a series of bilateral meetings with the hope of renewing um, the relationship that we have had with the um, ambassadors and the European Union in the past. And um, they will be looking to explore areas of potential collaboration as it relates to trade and investment, culture, tourism, agriculture and fishing, and security, just to name a few. So um, we are looking forward to meeting with the ambassadors from the European Union um, on Monday the 13th. I'm also pleased to announce that of our, the continuation of our longstanding relationship with the Canadian High Commission. You might recall in December, the last time I was here, that I mentioned that the incoming Canadian ambassador to, to Trinidad and Tobago, um, Ms. Carla hogan Ruffels, that she paid a courtesy call on the assembly. And um, she reiterated her commitment and to continue the longstanding relationship that was built by the previous ambassador, His Excellency, Mr. Gerard Latulip. And uh, Her Excellency gave a commitment to, con to continue the support in the areas of 
statistics and data collection, um, capacity building exercises as it relates to the development of the private sector, and as well she gave a commitment to assist us in terms of developing the export potential um, as it relates to agro-processors and entrepreneurs, and also to provide support for all trade facilitation efforts. And um, in addition, she also gave a commitment to as well assist the Division of Finance as we continue in our public-private partnership mandate. I'm pleased to announce that last Thursday, the ambassador, again, um, she kept her word and reaffirmed her commitment to Tobago. And on Thursday, um, she paid a courtesy call to the chief secretary and convened a, a, a trade facilitation, facilitation session together with Export Canada for a number of entrepreneurs and agro-processors in Tobago. I just want to applaud Her Excellency for, you know, for continuing um, on the work that was already established and for, you know, for fulfilling her commitment. Um, what this exemplifies, as I said last Thursday, is, a, is a, a respect for Tobago and the institution of the Tobago House of Assembly. And um, she has pledged her continuing support. And uh, what we will see is uh, uh, the hosting of a series of, of programs in this regard. You might recall as well this administration's mandate as it relates to assisting entrepreneurs and agro-processors on the island to have their products penetrate the export market. You may recall um, several missions that we undertook to the to Canada, to Miami, to New York, as well as um, we have been um, sending various samples of, of products here in Tobago to trade fairs in the UK. And um, what we're seeing um, is the fact that a number of Tobago's products, as we are aware and as we have seen the response internationally, that there is indeed a demand for Tobago's products by the diaspora. And um, as well as um, persons who are health conscious as well. And uh, we intend to continue the support um, of this administration um, for the agro-processors and entrepreneurs. Um, this is as, as well um, this administration's goal in our attempt towards diversifying the Tobago economy and assisting with the export, with the expansion of the private sector. Um, the collaboration with the Canadian Embassy also resulted in our collaboration through the Caribbean Local Economic Development Project, as well as a collaboration with Export TT and the Division of Finance and the Economy and the Tobago Agro-Processors Association. Um, this resulted in the direct support to 20 agro-processors here on the island to assist them as it relates to um, facilitate, facilitating the acquisition of um, plant and equipment. So now we have um, where these entrepreneurs are able to, instead of just being primary producers, but getting to agro-processing um, in the production and processing of sauces, preserves, teas, and as well as personal care products. Let me again reaffirm the support of the two big house of assembly and the division of finance as it relates to agro-processors and entrepreneurship. Um, the chief secretary has, has stated as a matter of urgency that the, that the grant and loan programs will be increased. And as well as we have a commitment towards um, establishing a half a million dollar re revolving loan for agro-processors here on the island. So again, I want to thank um, the High Commissioner of Canada, Tatran Tobago, for her overwhelming support, and as well as the support of Export TT and uh, Carry Led. Let me also say that we're working with Export TT to establish, to have a, um, a greater presence here in Tobago to facilitate um, export of Tobago's products. Um, we are in initial discussions, and I'm hopeful that by the second quarter of 
2017 that we will have an announcement, we should have an announcement by that date in terms of how we will have formally have a presence of export TT here in Tobago to facilitate the export of Tobago's products. Um, in the Division of Finance and the Economy, we will also continue to provide the necessary support um, for entrepreneurs, either through product testing. Um, we will be continuing our missions abroad to ensure that Tobago's products are not only available in Trinidad, but they are available regionally and internationally. At this time, I wish to commend the Mount Pleasant Credit Union. Um, it was on Sunday I was part of the commissioning of a new branch office in Mount Pleasant. And um, Mount Ple um, the Credit Union, the Mount Pleasant Credit Union, sorry, is one of the most successful credit unions on the island. And the commissioning of that new branch office took place in Canaan. And let me commend them. They are just shy of, of 67 years and with an asset base of, um, I was told on Sunday, of close to 200 million um, TT dollars. Um, they must be commended for what they are attempting to do um, in terms of wealth creation for their members. Um, the Division of Fence and Economy, we reaffirmed our commitment um, through the cooperative department unit in the division to continue our work um, to ensure that we assist the credit unions and cooperatives on the island with um, capacity building um, support and to ensure that they are ready for the dynamic, ever-changing um, financial services sector environment. I also urge the credit union um, on Sunday as well that um, we need to partner and to, be a little, and to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of facilitating the preparation of citizens resident in Tobago as it relates to retirement planning and as well as um, financial education seminars. You might recall that um, last December and, um, and in November, December, the Division of Finance hosted a series of um, we call it money fitness seminars and um, in order to prepare persons to manage and to treat with the challenge in economic times. And again, I issued a clarion call um, for the Monk Pleasant Credit Union and all credit unions on the islands and all financial services um, institutions on the island to let us work together towards ensuring that persons are adequately prepared for retirement and that we really increase and improve on the savings culture that we have here in Tobago. Um, and that is something that as Secretary that we will be rolling out in greater detail um, in the year and through the Financial Literacy Secretariat and in collaboration with the Division of Community, of community and, um, and in terms of that division being refashioned and being branded as enterprise development, we continue our collaboration with respect to the empowerment of, of persons in the community through um, entrepreneurship and wealth creation, and ensuring that a number of, of community groups, NGOs, faith-based organizations, you know, are, are assisted and you know, to get involved in that entrepreneurial drive that we have seen over the last um, 16 years or so. You might recall that to date the Assembly has invested over um, close to $55 million to, and um, approximately 1,500 persons have been the beneficiaries of this investment by the Assembly to get into entrepreneurship and either to start or continue a business. And what we want to see happening over the next four years is a, a revolution at the community level in terms of persons, you know, getting into entrepreneurship and a number of the groups that um, that you know receive subventions, they themselves have a responsibility to you know to reshape the organization and to look for entrepreneurial op opportunities um, and to see how these organizations can be successful. I also want to commend the Tobago Information Technology Limited um, for their sterling work over the past few years. Um, 
you might recall that it was on Tuesday, the 17th of January, that they celebrated their one millionth customer. And they must be applauded because I think they are a shining light in, in terms of um, customer service and service delivery to, to Tobago and to the um, Tobago public and as well as to visitors um, who are coming to Tobago and they also are providing services to institutions in Trinidad. Let me also state that they continue to manage quite well our IT walking centers as we continue to leverage the use of ITC here in Tobago. And I want to commend them. I know that, um, uh, you know, they are a shining star and um, they will continue to shine brighter and brighter. And another initiative that the Tobago Information Technology Limited will, we will launch and we will turn this sod for is the construction of the Tobago um, Innovation Center. Um, um, the contracts are, will be, are soon to be signed and, um, and we will see the, the construction of that facility. And that will also provide a, a avenue for persons to develop apps and a number of programs um, as we continue to leverage the use of ITC, ICT sorry, um, here in Tobago. Additionally, I want to commend um, another one of the um, state enterprises, Ticoswaf. Um, we recently commissioned, uh, we recently started work in terms of um, renovating that facility and to bring it up to up to an acceptable standard. And I think the one of the the final components in the second phase of the refurbishment work at Ticoswaf was the was the you know the installation of a generator. And we all know the, the challenges that we have been having recently with TN Tech. And um, that generator would give a lot of comfort to a number of of farmers, fisher folk, um, farmers and agro-processors in terms of the storage of their, of their fish, of their fish catch and, um, and, other, frozen, and other frozen meat products. Um, let me say that Ticoswaf continues to be an important component in facilitating um, our diversification efforts and assisting farmers in, in moving away from primary production. And um, let me say uh, hats off to the chairman and the staff of Ticoswaf for their hard work. Is it where the current bridge exists? You're going to remove that and put one that's well more improved, better? Yeah, well, definitely with um, the Bailey Bridge, is a matter of putting a bridge in place there. Um, I just, again, before even get into it, um, this is a collaborative project between the NITCO, the National um, Infrastructure and Development Company, and the Tobago House of Assembly, there was an MOU that was signed. And again, hats off, this is the kind of collaboration that we were talking about for the entire time, that strengthened partnership to make things happen um, better. Definitely, it's going to be a replacement of the, the Bailey Bridge. Um, so of course, with construction, there's always some minor inconvenience, but um, steps will be taken to ensure that the, that is minimized. Um, so we look forward to a brand new bridge um, at that location, uh, that location there. It's going to take 12 months, but when is it going to start? Um, they're actually already on site, so they're constructing um, their, their site offices. Um, the start date actually, well, they have been on site since the 5th of February. Um, so we should expect to see some work soon. There's a um, minor issue with a uh, crane that's on the location, and as a matter of fact, we would have been worked it out where um, the contractor will take on the removal of the crane um, that was holding up, um, along with some removal of some poles, some electricity poles. Um, with those obstacles out of the way, um, we expect that by the month's end or even before the month's end, we expect to see work commencing on that site. So. Again, the, the hard timeline is 12 months. Of course, we know things happen, but we expect to hold them to it. And it, it's, it's really heartening to see this kind of approach um, to development on the island. Right, and you said um, it's $18 million. $18 million for that specific one? That specific one, yes. There's a breakdown as well for, for the project. 
Huh? Okay, um, good afternoon, Councillor DeBeans. This is for you. Um, in regards to the bridges as well, mm. um, you said you're going to hold them to task, but what are the penalties if they do not um, keep to the timelines? Well, I mean, again, the contract, the contract will stipulate different things. Um, there will be room for variance depending on the contract. I don't have the details of the contract in front of me, so I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, but of course, we will be holding them to task um, on that. Of course, the project manager, Nitco, in this instance, um, they're working very closely with us. So we're going to ensure that the monitoring, so we don't get to the place where if they don't finish, but we're going to be monitoring all the way through um, to see that there's a type of progress that we want to see on the project. Um, and also on the topic of the noise pollution. Yes, um, no, that's near and dear to you as well. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is it going to be enforced? Because I mean, you said- I, I don't use that hard word enforcement. Okay. Yeah. Um, but again, the collaboration um, is there. Again, the community policing approach is taken, has been taken again. So um, there's monitoring going to be taking place and that's the collaboration with the environment department. So we're looking where at the situation where the police officers will be there along with supported by the environment officers. Um, they're going to be letting the bar owners know, hey, this is the acceptable standard and ensuring that we work together to keep that standard so we understand what, what each um, person's responsibility really is. So I don't want to use that hard word enforcement per se, but working together is key on this. Okay, so basically you're just going to go along and then just meet with the bar owners? Or yeah, the, the, there was already a meeting with, with some of the business owners. Um, so the business owners understand the challenges that um, the public is facing or the, the um, tourism business unit is facing to some extent. So it's a matter of ensuring that people stay within the parameters of their agreement or within the parameters of the acceptable noise, um, noise levels. And would it, would, it, would it just start in the southwest Tobago or would it spread out um, on Thursday? As well. No, so we're starting in the southwest on Thursday with our monitoring. Of course, we're piloting it. We will see how it works. Then we evaluate and, and see how we can roll it out um, island wide. Like, again, this is really sometimes it comes down to individual responsibility. And there are laws that are in place, but you know we don't take these things into account because we are we are happy society at times, and we like to enjoy um, the festivities that. Um, you know, we celebrate from time to time. And we sometimes have to recognize that we have individual responsibilities. Sometimes driving by at 10 or 11 p.m. with loud cars, you know, we like, some people like loud music and I don't take it away from them. That's what you like, that's what you like. But within everything, there needs to be reason and limits. Um, so we need to be mindful that, you know, when you're driving past um, or late in the night, you can't just be blasting music for everyone to hear. I mean, your music is for your enjoyment, and we appreciate that. But some people like enjoying other things like sleep. So we want to make sure that um, everyone can enjoy Tobago um, moving as we go to forward together. So you said that tomorrow at 9 PM, you yes. will be going out. Mm -hmm. But persons, the media would be putting this out. Persons would be aware that the officers would be out tomorrow. Yes. So don't you think that at that time, persons will decide to lower their music because they are aware? Are well, you all planning to go without persons knowing that, yes, we're coming into the communities? Well, well and, and that's why, as I said before, we're taking a community policing approach. So first of all, there were meetings with the community in the, in the area of the business owners. And it's not a, a permit me, a catch here kind of scenario. It's working together to achieve a particular objective. And even if they decide that they're turning on the music tonight, that means the first phase is, is already there where people recognize what they have to do, their individual responsibility. So I'm, I'm not going to say that the, the, it's going to be perfect um, the first time we roll it out. Um, of course, it depends on the strength of the unit and how consistent we're able to do it. But we plan to be very consistent with it. Um, you know, we don't have a track record as a country of always being consistent with the things that we do. But it's something that I, I intend to, to keep on and um, ensure that, again, everyone is, enable, is able to enjoy Tobago. And that's what we want everybody, whether it resident or visitor, everyone can enjoy Tobago. Thank you for staying with us for the Tobago House of Assembly's post executive Council Media Briefing for the week ending February 11th, 2017.